I'm Lu Yan from Beijing Review Magazine, and this is the Governance Podcast, a podcast that explores the past, present, and future of governance in China as it works toward meeting its development goals and finds its place in the global community. Since President Xi Jinping introduced the Global Civilizations Initiative (GCI) a year ago, the term "civilization" (文明) in Chinese has been receiving increasing attention. But what exactly does it mean? Are civilization and 文明 precise equivalents in meaning? The GCI underlines respect for different civilizations and strengthened mutual learning between them. So, how is it informing China's foreign policy? In this episode of the Governance Podcast, we'll be talking to our executive editor Yan Wei, Joseph Gregory Mahoney, a professor of politics and international relations at East China Normal University, and Philip Porto, a Brazilian researcher of international relations and an editorial consultant at China Oje Magazine, a sister publication of Beijing Review. To share their views of President Xi's thoughts on civilization. My first guest is Yan Wei, executive editor of Beijing Review, China's leading English language news weekly. Yan has 20 years of experience in international communication, and I have been working with him since my first day on the job. Yan Wei, thanks for joining me on the Governance Podcast. My pleasure. I know there has long been a debate on how to translate the Chinese term "文明" into English. What's your opinion on how it should be translated? "文明" is a word with many meanings. Often taken as an equivalent of civilization in English, it can have different meanings in different contexts. In Chinese political parlance. It encompasses all aspects of human progress while referencing the time-honored Chinese civilization. Wen Ming entered China's political lexicon long before the GCI was proposed. In the late 1970s and 1980s, China embraced the idea of giving equal importance to both the economic and the cultural lexical aspects of civilization, underscoring that they should progress concurrently. If translated literally, The two terms used were material civilization and spiritual civilization. As these terms did not translate well into other languages, translators chose instead to use the phrases "material progress" and "cultural lexical progress" to better convey the intended meaning. So, in the context of President Xi saying in Chinese he envisions a new form of human civilization, the meaning is that he envisions a new model for human advancement. This new model calls for coordinated progress on five fronts: economic, political, cultural, lexical, social, and ecological. These five fronts in Chinese are called five civilizations. Translators are often faced with a choice between being faithful to the original and producing native-sounding English. Economic progress sounds more native than material civilization, but. When translating the names of major Chinese official initiatives, translators often opt for a more literal translation to better convey China's way of looking at the world. Words in Chinese languages don't naturally have plural or singular forms, so the word 文明 is neither singular nor plural. In the context of the GCI, you're in favor of using the plural civilizations. Instead of the singular civilization, why is that? The GCI is based on four pillars: respect for the diversity of civilizations, the common values of humanity, the inheritance and innovation of civilizations, and international people-to-people -people exchange and cooperation. It's important to emphasize that the initiative is named for the world's many diverse civilizations, not about one global civilization. Or about using civilization as a verb, the GCI is of course not about building a global civilization in China's own image. Instead, it paves the way for a journey of discovery, learning, and shared growth. 
yielding the plural form of civilizations reflects the multifaceted nature of cultural interactions and contributions. It avoids negative interpretations, neocolonialism, for instance, and highlights respect for the diversity of civilizations that the initiative promotes. All civilizations created by human society are splendid, President Xi said in a March 2023 speech, in which he proposed the GCI. Chinese modernization as a new form of human advancement will draw upon the merits of other civilizations and make the garden of world civilizations more vibrant. When President Xi promotes the GCI, it should be understood that he sees each civilization as a distinct member within human civilizations as a whole, and that all should seek to improve themselves and to contribute their development, wisdom, and experience to the larger project of human development. Given its many meanings, fully understanding the concept of Wenming is a challenge for those outside China. I recently spoke to East China Normal University professor Joseph Gregory Mahoney and asked him why it's such a challenge. Let's take a listen. In your opinion, what makes the Chinese concept Wenming or civilization difficult to understand in the West? First, in China, there's this idea that there is. Five thousand years of civilizational history, and um, uh, what scholars tell us is that、uh, it is the oldest continuous civilization in history. Now, this is distinctive, and when the West、uh, considers its own history, they are unable to really compete with that concept of time for two reasons. First, because In many respects, Western history is much more fragmented than Chinese history, and secondly, we see these fragments being actualized in terms of different states in different parts of the West. So we can talk about Roman civilization, and we might say, well, to some extent, the United States has tried to emulate Roman civilization, but the United States does not consider itself to be. Part of、uh, the the history of Roman civilization, right? So China has this one long continuous idea, whereas、uh, the United States, as as let's say the the, the leading country of the West,、um, really only has, you know, just somewhere around three hundred years that it can consider, and even within the context of that three hundred years, tremendous differences and changes and ruptures. Now, in China, we've also had tremendous changes through time. But there have been continuities that other civilizations haven't experienced. Anyway, this is this is uh, uh, part of it. But then another part of it is, of course, this idea that、uh, there are people in the West that, when China think,、uh, talks about civilization, that in some way China is talking about a, a type of exceptionalism that the West then immediately regards as a competitive or an, or an aggressive positioning. Uh, or some sort of moral exceptionalism that justifies the Chinese system versus the Western system, and so many in the West find this threatening,、uh, particularly as they experience declines and feel vulnerable. So this is why I think people have、uh, various resistances or confusions when it comes to understanding the Chinese concept of civilization. How would you introduce the GCI's overall purpose and its importance within China's international relations strategy? The overall purpose of the GCI is to extend the principles long at work in Chinese foreign policy, including the five principles of peaceful coexistence, resolving differences while emphasizing common ground, mutual recognition and respect, seeking win-win solutions for mutual development, and so on, to account for cultural and civilizational differences internationally, as China continues to advance peacefully and self-confidently. As a major country in the new era, now in this way, the GCI also complements other key initiatives like the Global Development Initiative and Global Security Initiative, which all together provide an increasingly comprehensive approach to guide and advance major development strategies like the Belt Road Initiative.、And、what we see here is the articulation of a well-rounded principles-based foreign policy and how these values manifest in practice. In short. All of these initiatives are rooted in the same fundamental principles and altogether convey a reconcilable ethics. 
So let's focus briefly on why principles are being reaffirmed and extended in the new era as China develops and deploys what President Xi has called major country diplomacy. Here, the GCI is significant because it signals explicitly that China will continue to emphasize principles in its foreign policy uh, philosophy and practice. This is important because it's more commonly the case that major countries tend to eschew principles and throw their weight around in self-serving ways, which can be hegemonic and imperialistic, especially towards weaker countries. It's also the case that such strong countries tend to normalize no-holds-barred approaches to competition with other strong countries. Therefore, the GCI is significant because some countries have long employed self-serving and unilateral foreign policies. The United States, for example, is still trying to impose unilaterally a type of uh, American-defined universalism on the world, uh, undermining global cooperation and multilateralism and returning to a clash of civilizations model. In this context, the GCI offers a very different message based on very different values, that peace and development must come from respecting differences and learning from each other, including each other's sensitive, uh, sensitive but reasonable red lines. Uh, competition needs to be healthy and not aimed at dominating each other at humanity's expense. Uh, cooperation with the goal of building a human community with a shared future must be emphasized. Now, these values are themselves rooted in Chinese civilization, past and present, and are being renewed and expanded today. So in this sense, the GCI is not only an expression of civilizational tolerance, it's also an expression of civilizational values, Chinese civilizational values, that have now been expressed in Chinese foreign policy uh, theory and practice. Now, this is a positive message for everyone, including some Chinese uh, who might have overly nationalistic or, gen uh, or xenophobic tendencies or who fear uh, the Chinese leadership uh, might harbor the same. Uh, and I mean uh, uh, people inside China or outside China, right, who might have these, these fears or, or, or tendencies themselves. Uh, in fact, uh, as the GCI communicates, um, uh, the opposite is true. Archaeological research has confirmed Chinese culture dates back 10,000 years, and Chinese civilization has a history of more than 5,000 years. Interactions between different civilizations have existed since the dawn of humanity, from the ancient Silk Road connecting East and West to more than interconnectivity facilitated by globalization and digital technology. They have engaged in ongoing dialogue, a deep interaction of ideas, knowledge, and values that can shape societies. Through this inter-civilizational dialogue, China has contributed its ideas to other civilizations and, at the same time, benefited from their ideas. The Silk Road has inspired the Belt and Road Initiative, a China-proposed initiative to boost connectivity along and beyond the ancient trade routes. The five principles of peaceful coexistence China champions are mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, mutual non-aggression, non-interference in each other's internal affairs, equality and mutual benefit, and peaceful coexistence. My third guest is my Brazilian colleague, Philip Porto. He will share some of his observations on the GCI and China-Brazil intercivilizational exchange. Welcome, Philip. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. How do you view the progress China has made on the GCI since it proposed the initiative a year ago? Well, in its inaugural year, the GCI has translated into tangible endeavors that showcase its commitment to preserving cultural heritage and promoting mutual understanding. Examples include the establishment of the Alliance for Cultural Heritage in Asia and the Asian Fund for Cultural Heritage Conservation, which aim to safeguard cultural heritage sites and promote cultural exchanges. Events like the Lianzhu Forum, which supports the Belt and Road Initiative, have become platforms instrumental for fostering dialogue and collaborations among nations. Additionally, events like the Chandu FISU World University Games and the Hangzhou Asian Games have encouraged people-to-people -people exchanges 
and nurtured appreciation for diverse civilizations, promoting values like inclusiveness and empathy. Xi's emphasis on Chinese civilization and culture serves as a cornerstone for the GCI, drawing insights from China's rich heritage. Values such as continuity, innovation, unity, inclusiveness, and peace have long inspired China's approach to international relations, fostering goodwill toward neighbors and harmony among nations. In the broader context of China's global initiatives, the GCI emerged as a pivotal force. While the Global Development Initiative, proposed in 2021, focused on economic development and poverty alleviation, uh, and the Global Security Initiative, proposed in 2022, addresses security challenges, the GCI complements these endeavors by advocating diversity, common values, and international exchange. What do you think are the common values between China and Brazil? How can these common values promote inter-civilizational dialogue? Well, China and Brazil share several significant parallels in their historical development and also contemporary society. Both nations have been shaped by colonial legacies, boasting diverse populations and experiencing rapid economic growth in recent decades. Despite geographical distance, cultural exchange between the two countries is burgeoning, with a growing appreciation for each other's traditions and customs. There has been a growing cultural exchange with Chinese traditions and cuisine, gaining popularity in Brazil, and also Brazilian culture fighting audiences in China. Additionally, the presence of Chinese immigrant communities, the rise of Chinese language study, and mutual interest in technology and innovation further underscore the deepening ties between the two countries. This deepening connection presents opportunities for further collaboration and understanding between our nations. I will not mention the country's appreciation of the five principles of peaceful coexistence again, but draw attention to other aspects, such as the Global South Solidarity. As leading members of the Global South, China and Brazil often align on issues related to development assistance, South-South cooperation, and reform of global institutions to better represent the interests of developing countries. Second, infrastructure development. A component of another initiative, the Global Development Initiative, both China and Brazil recognize the importance of it, investing in infrastructure to support economic growth, improve living standards, and enhance international security through development. Cooperation in areas such as transportation, telecommunications, and energy infrastructure demonstrates this shared priority. Through collaboration with China, Brazil has now 5G network, and the number of Chinese electric cars is increasing in the country, not to mention the strategic partnership between both. It is a true strategic partnership. China depends on Brazilian export products such as soybeans, iron ore, proteins, cellulose, among others. And additionally, China is present in many strategic sectors in Brazil, such as energy. Chinese state grid owns CPFL Energia, which is the largest energy distribution company in Brazil's economic heart, Sao Paulo City. Both countries are strategically linked to each other, either in the area of some products Brazil exports or in the area where China has penetrated Brazil. Mutual appreciation and cooperation benefit both China and Brazil, two countries with vastly different cultures and traditions. That's one example illustrating why President Xi Jinping sees the world as a garden of civilizations. While each country has its own historical background and social conditions, they also share many common values and the same planet. He therefore calls for mutual respect and increased exchange among the world's peoples. Throughout this series, we'll be exploring topics related to presidency and how governance is practiced in China. To stay up to date on the podcasts, visit the Beijing Review website, bjreview.com. Find us on YouTube or Spotify with the tag Beijing Review, or look for us where you get your podcasts. I'm Lu Yan in Beijing. Thanks for listening to the Governance Podcast. Bye for now.